Hey everyone, Sir Terman here again. And yesterday we reached Diamond in Eternal. So today I'm going to take a little break and go back to our old friend Standard. And in Standard, we're going to showcase today Poro King because the Poro King got buff and now gets a snack when he levels up, which actually can be very powerful. And then we saw a buff to Porealis a couple patches ago to bring it down to five. So I think Poro King could actually be a legit deck in this standard meta now that a lot of other powerful decks have got a nerf so let's jump ahead and see how these games go by the way today is my birthday so if you're not subscribed yet make sure you hit that subscribe button below as a good birthday present for myself we recently crossed 7,000 subscribers and i thank you all so much for that 7,000 milestone let's try to get as high as we can before the end of the year so Thank you everybody again for all the support and always watching us. So hope you enjoy the games. And if you do, again, subscribe to us and you can stay to the end of the video where we do some mulligan tips and in-depth breakdown. Enjoy the games. In this match, we're going against Nami and Seraphine. Okay, so this is a standard Nami deck with Seraphine. I don't know that they can actually beat us if we get a lot of Poros down on the field with the Poros snacks and they're gonna be just buffed up, right? Like, I think we can just aggro them down by going super wide with the Poros. And there's not much that they can do about it. Okay, that's that's so frustrating, right? So they... I, 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 I guess I'll force, I'll force them to have the Mystic Shot here. I'll force him to have the Mystic Shot. Just sucks that they had that on turn one. If you want to Mystic this, I'm okay with that. Okay, they don't go for it. We'll pass. We'll play the we'll play the Porealis. We'll have nine cards. And then we'll stop playing our Poros out. You get your Nami. Cool. Let's go here. Poros snacks. Play the Proto play the Proto Poro. And play a Poros snacks. And just kinda go from there. Really? It's a bunch of Poro cards. I guess if they saw the Harsh Winds, if they get to see the Harsh Winds, like the Harsh Winds is the only useful card out of all the cards there that they could have actually got it. Ironically. All right. Five more spells. Five more spells. Three more spells, so this Nami, uh, sorry, four more spells. So this Nami is gonna level up really quickly. Unfortunately for us. We have the double Poros snacks. Formula, all right. We need the Poro King. So this, when Nami levels up, how scared am I of their... How scared am I of their elusives? Like, are they playing elusives here? Yeah, I, I block here. I don't want to block with this one. I think the I think the uh, the the tough is way too important for me to block with it right there. Probably should have just play the poro out. I don't I don't need that extra mana to be honest. Hmm. It's kind of weird, right? Like the opponent has so much value here. Their units are so big. They're gonna let yeah, this Nami's already leveled up and Seraph is about to level up as well. And we're not doing anything right now. We're not putting any pressure. We're kinda just nimbling alone until we get our other snacks, right? So until we get our Porokin. So until we get our Porokin, there's not much that we can do. Or even more poor snacks as well would be nice. Yeah, they, they get the kill here. Go out fetching a Poro. Uh, I don't even know that I want to play this Fable Poro yet, to be honest. Well. I guess we'll go ahead and kill you then. If, 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 the, if you have an answer for this, you have an answer for this. Like, obviously we'll trade. Okay, so you do have the answer. You have you have the Nami level dub. You're about to level up your Seraphine. This is gonna be a long game. This is gonna be a long game. 
that we have to deal with. So they need three more spells here. Mystic. And of course the Baden Discord as well, okay. We have the Harsh Winds, but it's not gonna do much. So we're really looking for the elusives at this point. I guess we can always use Berry Nice as well. Whenever we like the thing with Berry Nice is that I need to play it. I need to play this Berry Nice when I'm ready to just like win the game, right? So I need to play this Berry Nice when I'm ready to just win the game. Like just set up for like a big open attack. The Harsh Winds gives me some life here for a little bit. But the opponent can actually just double up the spells. I mean, the thing is that it's going to alternate, right? Because they have the Seraphine on the field, not everything is going to go into this um, into this Father Fury. I mean, if the opponent goes all in here... If the opponent goes all in here, I think this might be our best very nice anyways. Like, this might just be our best very nice, regardless. If the opponent develops anything. Like, if, if the opponent gives us any action back. Let the tide carry you. Rise with the surf. So, the downside here, though, is that we don't have a lot of units, right? So, we go like this. We very nice. The opponent loses both units and they lose it. Uh, we'll develop the Plunder Poro. We'll have a bunch of Poros with the Poro stories. Next turn, we'll have the Double Harsh Winds to survive again. And then we'll just need to find a second very nice, I guess. Okay, boom, ba boom. We'll go Plunder Poro. They got that from the Salvage Scrap. Okay, we, we found the second very nice, right? So we can go... Elusive, we can go Nimble Poro. And if we need to again, we can just bury an ice again. We'll take we'll attack with everything here just to start pushing damage into them. So we'll attack with everything here. Uh and then we'll play the plunder poro after. We have the harsh winds for the elusives. Heavy metal. I don't think I care about the keywords here. I think I just want to push damage. I think I just want to push damage. So I think I'm just going to play the Thunder Pearl out. This still leaves us with 12 mana next turn for us to have double harsh winds to stop the opponent's elusive. We also have an elusive blocker here, by the way. So the opponent has to also find a way to deal with this. I guess they have the chumpers. Worst comes to worst, we just bury again, right? And because they have multiple small units, they are... Yeah, okay, so they're going to get rid of my elusive. Yeah, so I think this game is just going to be us a double harsh winds and us doing very nice again. And even though we didn't get the Poro King, that should be enough to get us there. Opponent gets the extra mana. They have a lot of damage here. But they still need to commit some extra cards before they can actually kill us. So... They need to commit extra cards before they can kill us. Let the tide carry you. Ride the surging tide. Okay. Do we just bury again? <laughs> Thank you. You gave you, you're giving me the you're giving me the options to bury, right? So you're giving me the options to bury nice here. So now we can go Poro Herder. I don't care what you have in your hand. You won't be able to kill us here. And then next time we and then their next attack turn, we're still gonna have the double harsh ones to save ourselves. But then I, I don't think we win anyways. We will have to draw the third very nice. 
There we go. So once again, bye bye Nami. Hey, Daring Poro. So we have an elusive blocker now. Title. Okay, so the opponent gets another blocker here because of the title. We'll go here. We'll play the Fable Poro. Let's hope that we get some nice keywords. Aftershock. Okay, so they get to kill. I, I actually think the opponent was better off drawing there, but I can understand why. They want to be able to commit lethal with their elusives, right? Um, I need another Poro. Well, that's a Poro. I need another Poro, and I certainly deliver here. Let's see what Poro Snatch we get. Depending on the Poro Snatch we get, we might or might not go for this Fable Poro. Uh, it's not a snack that it's not a snack that lets me commit lethal. But it's also not a bad snack. Right? So it's not a snack that lets me commit lethal, but it's also not a bad one here. We go for the poor, colorful snacks. Opponent has to block. They get the harsh winds, which they stole from us. So they know that we have the harsh winds, right? They get double the Nami for double the value. You're still taking a lot of damage. This guy survives. You have one card left. You have one card left. Let's go here. That way we trade and keep this one alive. You have one card left. What is that card? Like, what is that card? So, I don't think... Okay, so the opponent gets to... Like, I just need to use a single Harsh Prince next turn now. Like, I just need to use a single Harsh Winds, because the opponent doesn't have enough spells to buff their elusives anywhere higher. It sucks that they keep getting this Seraphim value. Right? You know I have the Harsh Winds. You cannot commit the spells until afterwards. Like, you know I have these Harsh Winds. So I don't understand the purpose of this attack. Sucks that we don't get the Poro snacks here, but I think I have to just go ahead and develop all the Poros regardless. They get, they get multiple blockers here. So I think I have to just develop all the Poros regardless here and just go for the Fable Poro and hope that we get like an Overwhelm. Or something similar. We're gonna go down to just 2 HP. Okay, so we go Fable Poro. We got multiple elusives. We go second Fable Poro. And then we have a Poro Snacks here. They could actually just kill me. They got the Nami out of everything. And they could actually just kill me. Wow. Wow. Okay, we got the Overwhelm here. Cool, cool. We got the Overwhelm here. Fearsome. Doesn't matter. It's gonna... What, what matters here is whether the opponent can actually hit my Nexus or not. If they hit my Nexus, I'm dying here, right? Like if one of these hits my Nexus, I guess it has to be it has to be it has to be it has to be the one that gets duplicated that needs to hit my Nexus. If he doesn't hit my Nexus, I'm okay, right? Wait, we're okay. We're okay. We don't even lose any of our units. And hey, guess what? We don't need to do anything here. We can just pax. We have our elusive blockers next turn. Opponent has no cards. We don't get another Poro, which kind of sucks. We have harsh winds. Why did I think they had no cards? 
But again, they're using all the spells now instead of later. I don't know. <laughs> Why do I think they have no cards? Every time I think they have no cards, they just... Are you kidding me? So they get to transform one of these guys. We are very important. So here's the thing. If I harsh wins right now, I can actually like make it so that it's frozen. No. I think this harsh wins is better off. What do, what are we doing with this harsh wins? Because if I harsh wins now, I can harsh wins this too. And then I don't have to worry about the elusives. Opponent still has way too many way too many blockers. That it's not gonna matter. I need to get another Poro. I need to get another Poro because because I played this one last time, I didn't get the Poro snacks this time. So my Poro King is actually weaker than it should be. Uh, I think it's correct for me to just remove their... Oh wait, they didn't even attack with the Seraphine, so that makes it even better for me. Yeah, so that makes it even better for me, so we just go like this. We just go like this and just chill for now. We get rid of one of their blockers. And opponent's gonna have to get rid of that second elusive. We get the Fury Trigger here. I need another Poro. Opponent still has two cards, guys. Okay, that's I, one card. I forgot one of them was not important. Oh, that's a good one. Give me the Freeze or the Challenger. Are you kidding me? They have to block with the elusive. Here. They have to block with their champions. Heck yeah. They can keep their... Like, this is better than them having a spell. Them. You still need to block with the rest. Because this sure. overwhelm is so good. So the opponent is only able to block here. So this overwhelm is pushing 6. It's going to be 7. Opponent needs to block everywhere else. Like, they actually need to block everything. So they're losing the whole board here, except for Seraphine. They're losing the whole board here, except for Seraphine. Yeah, you, you can't you can't stop it. No! You, 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 I have the elusive. Like, you, you're gonna lose. Yeah. I have the elusive over one Porokin. I wish this was the pepper snacks, right? Like, there was so many better outs here. Pepper snacks would have been better. Um, the free snacks would have been better. Because now we lose the Porokin. And we still one off, right? So we lose the Porokin and we're one off. And the opponent still has a Seraphine. And could potentially find their last elusive. If this was a pepper snatch, we win the game on the spot. Like... Oh, opponent has gotten such good value. Now, if we survive one more turn, we get there. My quest okay. But I will see through. Unless this is a burbo fish, we're okay. If this is a burbo fish, I'm gonna cry. A Shelly burbo fish wins in the game. Okay, so the impact. And the Overwhelm should get us there. We just open attack, right? We open attack because we have two ways for lethal, Overwhelm, and Impact. And we have... A, the opponent doesn't have anything big enough damage-wise to stop this. What? what a stupid game. What a stupid game. Come on. I guess they could technically have the burn, but they played the Mystic Shot before, didn't they? I don't even want to go back. Did they actually play this Mystic Shot? Heads obliterated, doesn't matter. That's exactly four. Let's go. I'm not even going to go to Snack, just in case the opponent is playing us. I'm just going to 
There we go. Oh my goodness, what a freaking battle. The double berry nice just bought us the time that we needed to put pressure into the opponent and also be able to survive. So <laughs> GG's this this is how the Portal King games are gonna go for you. In this match, we're gonna against Timo and Kayla. So can we actually get our stuff before they get to us? Okay, so we have one Poro snacks, that's good. We have the affectionate Poro to deal with the Timo. I'm gonna keep this Poro Herder, because he could let me get an Elusive or the Poro Kin. We got the very nice anyways. So the opponent cannot play Timo here, right? We have multiple Poro snacks, so this is looking decent for us. All right. Never mind. I'll take I'll take a free team. Eh? That's why I kept this affectionate Poro. I'll take a free team. Eh? Don't mind me if I do. Uh, it's still not great though. <laughs> this is still not great because opponent, of course, gets a second team. Eh? Sure. Let's just stay on my deck now before the opponent has a bunch of shrooms in it. Yeah, not not great still. Uh, we need to put pressure. We need to put pressure into them. Yeah, the Daring Poro is nice. Because it gives me a team of blocker. We still lose to a Mystic Shot on it though. Okay, so, so like we can go like this. And have a blocker for their team. We have a Poro Snacks. Um... And at this point, a Mystic Shot is a problem. So Mystic kills this team, this Poro. Opponent still has enough mana for it, and then they get to attack with their team. Huh? Okay, so that's fine then. So I'm less worried. Yeah, let's just go like this, I guess. Let's go like this for now. Um, I'm taking a lot of flashbacks, so I want this guy to survive, right? We can go here again. We have another elusive. We have another Poro snack, so this guy's going to continue surviving. Our Poros are going to start becoming bigger and bigger. Yep, so we just go here. I guess if opponent has another Mystic, they get to kill this. So do they have the double Mystic? Why not play that Mystic last turn? You know that I could only have one Poro Snacks. The Flash Bomb also kills this if we get a Flash Bomb. So maybe attacking with this was a mistake. Okay, we didn't hit the Flash Bomb. We have a Poro Snacks and we have another Poro. So I'm not scared of the Elusive. Um, at this point, we're going to start putting pressure by summoning a bunch of our stuff. So, we can go Nimble Poro, Daring Poro, oh, okay, well, remember when I said Nimble Poro, we're going to go Fable Poro, so now we can block this Trump Womp, we have Regen even, we have another Elusive Poro, this has Quick Attack, and Elusive, so that's not bad. If you attack, uh, yeah, opponent just wants to get the flash bombs, right? If you attack, you're kind of just eating up this. I'm still, Karina's still a problem, right? I have 25 puff caps. I'm down to take this block. We play a secondary Poro, and I, I think I, I think I kind of like. Oh no, we only have seven. I think I need to go wide. I was, I was thinking, you know, maybe, like, is it the Poro snacks? Or is it the Fumble Poro? The Fable Poro? I guess we can do both. I guess we can go like this. Get the Pally Poro. Go the Destin Poro. And then play the Poro Snacks. This is going to be a Karina, I'm guessing. If I ever seen one. Five Flash Bombs. We go Pally. We go Destin. Ooh, that's not a Karina. That is not a Karina. So we go here. We replace this one with a Destin Poro, and then we have a Poro Snatch. And opponent's gonna have to start blocking because this Poro's gonna be pushing a lot of damage. 
Uh, opponent doesn't even have a good block because this one has quick. I guess they have a good block into the Destiny Coral. Yeah, they have a good block into the Destiny Coral. Here we go for the Coral Snacks. That allows me to keep my Poros alive from any random flash bombs. And then we play the Destiny Poro. Or if we get a better Poro, we can play the better Poro. Better Poro. Okay, we didn't get the better Poro. We didn't even hit any flash bombs, by the way. So we go like this. The Poro King is actually leveled up as well. Have them block with the Chump Womp on this one and everything else attacks. This guy doesn't really matter. To be honest. Second Poro Snacks. Karina. 37 Puff Caps. It's still not enough to kill me. We're doing five. Alright, so we'll go like this. Opponent got another Teemo. So they can block here. Block the Destiny Poro. Block with the Investigator. And then still take eight damage. Excuse you. The Harsh Wings is amazing against Kaelin because the Kaelin could be the one thing that I couldn't have dealt with. Oh, they're going to give me the Flash Bomb Peddler as well. I guess that makes sense. I guess that makes sense. Give me the Peddler. We don't even need to... Ooh, wait. I think that's actually crazy. I think taking that much damage is too much. Ha! Huh. I don't know about this one. I do not know about this one. So, Karina is not enough. Karina is not enough. Kaelin gets beat by the Harsh Winds. So, Kaelin gets beat by the Harsh Winds. So, we need to keep 5 mana for Kaelin. So, all we can do here is going to be the Poro Stories. So, we go Poro Stories and we can go again and get the Plucky Poro. Get tough for the splash bombs. The opponent's dealing six. <sighs> Next time we can attack. Like, how scared am I of this Karina? Like, if opponent doesn't attack with Kaelin here, I do get the mana. I can still just freeze the Kaelin next turn. But then he's losing, like... Let's investigate. Oh. Well, this is easy. Well, that was, that, was, well, that one was easy. Opponent even gave me a blocker. So now the opponent has no way to beat this elusive. We have another Harsh Rings for our second Kaelin next turn. Ah, they have their own Harsh Rings. But playing Harsh Rings now means that they don't have Harsh Rings for later, right? So... Here, this is interesting, right? Because I don't think this has overwhelm. So if we go harsh winds, like opponent's not killing us here, right? Opponent's not killing us here with the Caitlyn. We can kill them because of the overwhelm. Alright, so if we go poro snacks. And then we go Harsh Winds. And I guess that gets us there. If they have... If they have Fury of the North on the Kaelin, we could actually give them the win. So if they have three sisters into Fury to buff up the Kaelin, they could actually get there. Okay, they didn't have it. Oh, wow. Yeah, if they have the three sisters, I would have lost, right? I cannot beat that. I guess I could have technically still lost, by the way. This is exact lethal here. And we get there. So, good thing that we forced the Harsh Winds out of them last turn. So that we could actually get to this position. So, GG's. In this matchup, we're going against... Pain and... Aatrox, right? So... Okay. 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 I'm going to keep this hand. I think the double natural Poro Snacks is the cheapest way for me to just buff up my stuff. So if I can just have my units be really thick, and we even get this, we even get the Poro can. So if I can have my units be pretty thick, opponent's gonna have a hard time dealing with us. So 
We'll go pearl fly. We even get the pearl. Okay, so we're gonna have a lot of snacks. We're gonna have a lot of snacks and a lot of poros. A lot of snacks and a lot of poros. Uh the opponent could have an equipment here, and it's gonna make it harder for me to actually block next turn. That's fine. Because they're gonna have tough, so we're gonna take three damage. We'll take three damage, and that's okay for now. For now. Alright, we'll take seven damage, I mean. We don't have to take seven damage. We can we can block this one. Just prepare it to die afterwards. We can block this one. Keep the spell shield unit. Yeah, taking seven damage might be a little bit too much. Uh, we'll go Poro Stories. Get ourselves an Elusive Poro. Like, the Poro King would be nice next time, but I don't think we are allowed to play it, to be honest. So, I think we just keep these Poro Snacks. Right, so we can just keep these poor snacks. Let's go here. Alright. Uh let's go. No, let's go for it. Let's go plunder the poro. We just play the next poro snacks. And we have we we we're starting to build the board that I'm talking about, right? We're starting to build the board that I'm talking about where I can just completely continue like Putting a lot of poros, especially with the Porealis. And with the Porokin on the field, it's gonna be really difficult for them. They already get eight traps though, and they have the quick attack with the free feather tracker. If I can get the freeze poro snacks once the poros once the porokin is leveled up, that's also gonna be really good. So yeah, we'll just go like this. Uh we'll give this to you, give this to you, and give this one to you. Cool. I like this party poro. It means that the poro king is gonna come in leveled up. So we'll be able to get the special snacks right away. To be able to continue buffing my poros even more. Right? So we can get the special snacks right away and we'll have exactly the two mana to play it. This is where the poro buff comes into play. If you have uh, the fish fight costs three now. So if you wanna use the fish fight, be my guess. So we'll go here, Poro Kin. We'll get these Poro snacks. We get the pepper snacks, not the bread, not the best one, but also not worse, not bad. And my units, including my Poro Kin, are gonna start becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, this Fable Poro is a great blocker as well. Opponent has the Anaka stuck here, has the Stavatu here, and has the Solani here. Fish fight into fish fight could kill the Poro King, right? So if the opponent has fish fight into fish fight, they get to kill it. But that, that, that's spending the whole turn doing that. Okay, Cataclysm? Sure. Sure. We'll have another Poro King. I wish you probably attack here. Why didn't we attack here? Yeah, why didn't we attack here? Opponent has no blocker here. I guess I don't want to give them this Taratu yet. So maybe that's fine. Yeah, maybe I don't want to give them this Taratu just yet. Uh, I'm kind of. I don't want to play Porokin until after the opponent attacks. Because I don't want to, I don't want to get beat up by the challenger into another fish fight. We have waited so long, Solani. And now peace is just moments away. I guess honestly, if they have it, they have it. Let's get another snack right now with the plucky poro before this poro king dies. If they have it, they have it. There it is. Just like we talked about. Wait. I guess I can force him to challenge here. Yeah, I'm just gonna go like this, right? Because I get to get a Poro Snacks here. I get to get a Poro Snacks here. Why would you do that? You 
like you knew how to poro snacks so they're gonna be able to kill my my poro king but we get another poro snacks here so we already get the value that i wanted anyways so we get the value that we wanted anyways uh the problem is gonna be this 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 eight rods right and just how big this like the world ender is gonna be pretty cheap when it's all said and done but what i decided to put <laughs> to get their anaka Okay, well, this very nice kind of just protects us against anything we will worry about. So now we can just completely destroy all their stuff and just settle for Lito. We have Poro Snacks and a Pepper Snacks, so our Poros are going to be 7. So they're going to be 7. Hmm. I mean, props to them. They, be, be able, they were able to kill both Porokins. But in this mid-range matchups, if I can get my Poro Snacks, you kind of end up losing, unfortunately, too much value. Okay. So then next turn, we let them play their World Ender if they want to. Well, that, that, just, that just adds more insult to injury, huh? Yeah, we'll, we'll let them play the wall ender. And we just go very nice. And opponent loses their whole board. And cannot get this big, this big at things. Sure. So we go here. And you don't get this Taratu. And we're chilling. They lose their eight trots. Well, they don't lose it, but yeah. This is probably the worst matchup for the Bane Aatrox player because my units get so big and I also play triple very nice. So next turn, we just have a pretty big open attack that just beats them. Like, this open attack just wins the game. <laughs> and I think they see it, right? Like, I, I was just going to play my other Poro and then just go from there. But that's kind of what you want to do in this mid-range matchup. So, GG's. In this matchup, we're going to get Lucian and Kendra. So, our Poros can get big. But the fact that Lucian will be able to level up really quickly here could potentially be a problem for us, right? I want to see if I can find my Challenger Poro to try to pull that Lucian away. Uh, not Challenger, but I guess we'll get the Ingbar and at least start getting our Derry Poro. And other Poros a little bit bigger than the Shubi. Let's just push this one damage now. No reason not to. Yeah, because Luc Lucian is going to be a problem unless we can find a way to kill him. Because he's going to just level up so easily. If this is like a, what the deck that I'm thinking of. The Freezes will help us a little bit at least. Uh, yeah, let's just give all that Poros plus one plus one. I don't have... Like, I don't have the thing, right? Oh, wait, this only works for allies on field? Interesting, okay. That's on me. We learned something new today. We learned something new today. I thought that worked on all allies, but apparently it only works on the allies that are currently on the field. Still don't have the challenge of Poro, but we do have a good way to level up the Poro King here. We have plenty of Poros. Uh, we'll do the Poro stories before we do for the Fable Poro. I do need to find some Poro snacks. These Poros are one one and not doing much for us. We do get the Poro King though, so I think this should help us out. Let's go for the Poro stories first. That's our challenger Poro. Um, let's go Proto Poro. So we can level up this. We can level up this Poro King pretty easily. And once this Poro King is leveled up, we should be able to get some value. Let's go Proto Poro. Ah, uh, party poro, sorry. If we play this poro king and the opponent has like a vengeance, I'm in trouble. So this is a consideration that we just pass. Okay. So the opponent tapped out a vengeance. So then the only way for them to kill this soul harvest unit. Ah, uh, the only way to, for them to kill this poro king is if they somehow play um I guess they could steal vengeance next turn, right? They could play the crumble, right? They could play the crumble to kill this Poro King. Let's 
so clean. Okay, so... If we go a fetch and a poro, we level up this poro king anyways, and we get double the snacks. We get the poro snacks and the uh, level up snacks from the from the espresso, and then we can still do what we want to do next turn, which which is go ahead and play the fable poro. So we can give them one of these. Or we can give them all two, or we can just go ahead and do the Fable Poro right now. Mm. I'll give you both. I'll give you both. I'm going to be able to fill up these Poros pretty easily. Yeah, we'll go We'll go at fetching a Poro here so that we can get something that has access to Challenger. So we'll get another one. We'll play a Poro Snacks. Because we get, we're getting a lot of snacks here, right? Okay, so let's go ahead for the Colorful Snacks instead. This gives a random keyword, Augment. That's not bad. So if this Poro King gets, like, Spell Shield or something, the opponent's going to be in a lot of trouble. So now we go Fable Poro. <laughs> spell Shield. That's not bad. We have the Challenger Snacks here. Which lets me kill this Kendra, right? Ah, this Kendra, this Kalista. I've been playing a lot of Kendra. It's not like we even need this Challenger Snacks. We might only use one and then use a regular Poro Snacks. Yeah, we might just only use one and then use a regular Poro Snacks. So if we go here and here. And then go for a Poro Snacks. We can go like this. And this is actually Lito, by the way. Actually, we probably had Lito with the Poro King and the... Yeah, no, we had Lito, by the way. Right? We had the Poro King, both have Spell Shield. We even have an Overwhelm here. I didn't pay attention to the keywords that I had. We have Brash here, too. We had the Challenger. We had the way to get Lito this time, but whatever. We had the Impact, we had the Overwhelm, we have the Augment, and two units that have Spell Shield with Augment. Uh... Yeah, they're gonna go like this, and they still it's not gonna be lethal. We're still in a really good position, anyways. We lose the impact. We have another challenger poros snacks later. We have multiple poros that we can get. We're gonna have the harsh winds and the three sisters. So this is fine with us. You lose you lose both of these. This is not a crash blocker. I should, have, I, should, I should have thought that turned a little bit better. Because, again, I'm pretty sure we could have had Lethal there. Between the between the Brash and everything else. But, again, we'll take it. We'll take it like this for now. Um, Poro Stories or Poro King Castle Quad? Wow. I think I like the Poro Stories. Here we go. We got an Elusive. So, now we have a Poro Snacks. Everything's going to have Impact. So, we don't want to play that until next turn, I guess. And that's the game. So we didn't have the lethal last turn, but the opponent had nothing that they could do against this Poro King once we were able to get established on the field. So GG. Hey, welcome back everyone. Hope you enjoyed today's games. Uh, very fun, very fun games of Poro King. The deck is very straightforward though, right? Like this is this is all just stats. Like this this deck is literally just all stats. You win or you lose, right? So you just put a throw a bunch of stats into the into the field and eventually it's gonna stick right so so just keep that in mind when you're playing this deck the good thing is that because you constantly continue getting all the sporo snacks you do tend to outvalue all the mid-range decks like that bane atrox deck yes they were able to deal with a lot of the things that we had but we were able to get our poros bigger and bigger every single turn of course the very nice is probably the mvp of this deck it won us so many matches and it's so good with this archetype because all your poros are really cheap and they can become really, really big. So it's not that difficult for you to be able to use Berry in Ice. And I still have enough mana to play at least two Poros. And next time be able to play a couple more. And just fill, the, fill, your, fill your whole board, right? And it's going to be very difficult for the opponent to deal with the full board. 
if all their units are under very nice as well so so that is one reason why this very nice can be very powerful and why we prefer failure for this Pearl King deck versus other regions that people have tried before like Targon, Billswater, Ionia, etc. Uh, in terms of Mulligan, it is very important that you can start buffing up your Poros. So I'm looking for Porokin, Poro Snacks, right? These are the two main cards that you want to look for. And if you don't see either of them, that's when I consider keeping the Porealis. But it is important for us to get one of those nine cards so that we can actually have the Poro Snacks to get a Poro to at least be 2-2, right? When they're 2-2, they can at least trade well into certain things that the opponent might have. But at 1-1... One, one, they are very bad at trading into opponent's units. So at least at a 2-2, two -two, you start kind of getting some value, and that's kind of what we want to get them at. So at least Poro King and Poro Snacks are the critical parts, and Poro Realis is kind of like the afterthought if you don't have any of the Poro Snacks or Poro Kings in your hand. After that, you can just start playing out your Poros as they come so that you can slowly level up your Poro King and kind of get, get your value that way. Um... There's not really a lot more that I really can be said about this deck. Like, this strategy is, is as simple as it gets. It's a very beginner friendly deck in terms of how to pilot it. Uh, I don't believe a lot of these cards are. I can't remember which. Yeah, okay. So, we have six epics and three champions. So, it's. I mean, it's a little bit expensive with six epics, but it is 22 common cards. So, you're able to kind of craft most of it pretty easily. And as long as you find, you, you, you don't have to spend charts on six champions. You only have to spend charts on three, which again makes it really good as a beginner friendly deck because it's easy to pilot and not as expensive as six champion decks that you might see out there. So yeah, give it a shot if you just started this game so that you can kind of learn at least some of the ways that this game, can, that, that Legends of Terra works out. So hope you enjoyed today's games. If you did, make sure to like it below and subscribe to us. We post LOR videos every single day. You can also find us on Twitch at 2 September. We stream every now and then. And you can also find us on Discord and Twitter. The links to those are both in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you all again tomorrow. Enjoy your day.